Morena Tate, kia ora tate. I hope that you're all invigorated by coffee and croissants and uh, looking forward to a fantastic morning. I'll begin with a, our brief karakia, our brief blessing to start our day, and then a brief mihi to welcome our visitors, and, and then uh, we can, I will hand over to our organisers to, uh, to take us through the rest of our day. Um, nō reira, uh, whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai, kia hi ake te, te hauhu, hauhunga, uh, kia hi, kia chi, he tio, kia huka, kia hauhunga, ki hei wa mauri o rāmi. So Gerard and, um, Gerard and also uh, Gloria, that blessing means may the stormy winds of, the, of, the, of, the west, of our western coast subside, May the cold winds of, um, of our southern, of the southern end of our country, subside and warm and be, become more temperate. Uh, may we be wake, may, may we be woken up in the dawn with a splash of um, a splash of the, the life and vigor of, of the frost. So we're wakened up in, in an enlivened state, and it acknowledges um, our connection to land and also our connection to ourselves. Nō reira tātou katoa, ki huri noa ki roto tā tātou nei whare, all of us here were in our whare, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou, tēnā tātou katoa. Welcome, welcome, twice welcome. Uh, kei, ro, kei raro tātou i a, i a te maunga o Ahu Mairangi, kei te taha hoki o te awa o Tiaki, huri here, rere here haere ki tā tātou nei whanga o te whanganui a tara. Nō reira ngā mihi uh, ki ngā maunga, ngā mihi ki ngā wai. Ngā mihi hoki ki a koutou nei uh, maunga, ki a koutou nei wai, ka mauri a mai ki roto i tā tātou nei huhuingi tēnei rā. No reira, um, just also acknowledging Ahu Mairangi, our mountain beside the National Library, Tiakiwai, the, the river that flows underneath Aiken Street, um, down to our, uh, down to our um, harbour, Te Whanganui Atara, and also greeting all of the many mountains, all of the many rivers, and all of the many bodies of water that all of you bring, and also that Gloria and Gerhard bring into our, um, into our space with us today. Uh, ka, ka tautoko au i ngā, i ngā kaupapa e pāna ki, ki Alianza, ki te whakawhiriwhiri whakaaro, ki te whakatakoto kaupapa, ki mui a tātou aroaro. He runga i tēnei rā, te rā o, o, te, um, o te kāhui rangatira o te ao, uh, mo tēnei rā o um, ngā, ngā reo taketake o ia, ia, ia motu, ia motu, ia whenua, ia whenua. And I'm happy to endorse and, um, and support um, all of the, um, the initiatives of IFLA and the initiatives of Lianza, particularly in this year of the UN United Nations year of um, supporting indigenous languages. And given the importance of librarians to actually uphold knowledge and share knowledge and create new knowledge, and um, the fact that um, the Māori language is one of those knowledge bases here in New Zealand, no, no reira, um, kia koe gloria, kia koe gerard, no mai, no mai haramai, no reira, tēnā, tēnā kōrua, tēnā kōrua, tēnā koutou kato. Kia ora tātou. Kia ora Hugh and thank you for that. Uh, before I get underway, uh, health and safety. So uh, if in the event of an emergency, you've got lots of National Library staff here to help guide you safely from the building, but we will either go up the, follow the exit signs up the stairs or um, where the other exits are, and out through the Aitken Street doors that you probably came in through. Um, and in the event of an earthquake, you're in a very safe building, so just do what you would do on an aeroplane in the brace position. I'm sure we won't need to know that. Kia tangi noa mai kikihi punamu. Ko manawatu te manawa rahi. Manawatu ki te whakamaru. Ki raru iho ki ana mata. Ki a ringa o oku matua. Nō reira ko Rachel toko enua. Nō te papa oia aho. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou a katoa. Kia ora. I'm Rachel Essen, I'm President-elect of Lianza, and I'm also a director here at the National Library. And it's um, a great pleasure to welcome everyone here early in the morning. We really appreciate you uh, coming to meet our special guests. Um, in June 2017, Lianza submitted an expression of interest to host the World Library and Information Congress in 2020. And in that document, we described Aotearoa New Zealand as a country of open hearts, a country where care for the land and people is genuine, a country where life is for living, a country where time spent together is never wasted, 
and where lasting partnerships are formed. And most importantly, a country where strangers are treated as friends and memories are made. We believe that Aotearoa New Zealand will offer World Congress delegates a unique experience shaped by the bicultural partnership approach we strive for with Māori. Lianza and Taroka Fakaho have worked in partnership with the National Library, Te Puna Mataranga o Aotearoa, to put forward a bid with the theme of Open, Trusted and United. Our theme celebrates the value placed on libraries by our communities and also the values as a profession we uh, endeavour to embody. We see that bringing Willock to um, Auckland is both an opportunity to showcase the impact of libraries in New Zealand and an opportunity to advocate for the positive role of libraries for our communities. We were officially announced a great fanfare um, as the hosts for Willock 2020 at Kuala Lumpur last year. And I would encourage you, if you haven't seen the video of our Prime Minister, um, the support video, do go and watch it, it's fabulous. Um, and then the work began. So we've formed a national committee, which is co-chaired by Bill McNaught, National Librarian, and Tapaya Paringatai. Um, we have portfolio leads in place, and those leads are shaping working groups. And I'm also very pleased to be able to present to you our logo, and you are the first to see this officially. Um, many thanks to Taropa Fakaho colleagues for their work to help us develop such a beautiful and special logo. The Moko Kauai is a taonga, and it's such a privilege to be able to share this with our library colleagues from around the globe. I can put my hand on my heart and say that this is truly an exciting time to be a Lianza member. And the opportunities to get involved will be many, so don't miss out. And now it's my pleasure uh, to welcome IFLA President Gloria Perez Salmaron and IFLA Secretary Gerald um, Leitner to Aotearoa, the country of open hearts. And I know that you're looking forward to hearing from them, so I won't go on. Um, Gloria is going to speak first, and then Gerald. But I would like to end with a quote from my boss, Bill McNaught, from his letter of support for the Willock bid. We are internationally minded, we are digital, and we share IFLA's values. Let the fun begin. Welcome, Gloria. Hola. Hola is a uh, kia ora. It's uh, my Spanish way to say I'm so happy to be with you, all of you here. Thank you for your welcome. Um, I learned yesterday many things from the Yomari culture. I would like really to, to be deeper and know many things for next year. And it's an honor and it's a pleasure for me as IFLA president to, to be here today and speak with all of you. Um, and it's exciting to be on the other part of the world, you know, because uh, I'm from Barcelona, from Spain, and um, it took me a lot, almost two days to get here. <laughs> um, but it's really a pleasure meeting you. And look at your eyes and see how happy and honored you are because you are going to host the next IFLA conference 2020, so in Auckland. So thank you also for been so um, working hard to, to have this conference and we saw already this nice logo that we discussed in the GB and we thought that it was really representing your culture and we want to share with you your joy to have this conference next year. As you know, um, IFLA is the global voice of libraries and IFLA Secretary General and Mr. Gary Leina and myself, we are honored to represent all of our members all over the world because it's your support, your engagement, and that motivate us to, to work further for the library field. And this is the reason that it makes IFLA possible without our members. IFLA is nothing, you know. It's our active capital, the human capital, um, the, your motivation to become members of IFLA. First, of course, LIASA, and then IFLA. 
and <clears throat> with a, a strong and successful library community talking and have a greater role of the library stage, I hope to see a strong and successful New Zealand libraries play a growing role within IFLA. I believe that uh, we align, that we are ready to move forward together. Um, the, the theme that you will get for the uh, 2020 um, conference, for example, must really resonate strongly with uh, us and with all our colleagues on the world. So something that can engage all of us to, to come here, but um, of not be seen remotely, but uh, being really uh, very well connected with the ideas of the library community. Um, as I said in my presidential statement, I truly believe that universal access to information has to be the key, the key goal for humanity today. It will decide whether we achieve with the UN, U the United uh, um, Nations um, Sustainable Development Goals, that it means that we, uh, librarians, but libraries as gateways to information for all, can deliver freedom and empowerment for every human being. This is something we can do, because we know how to manage this. And therefore, we librarians have the utmost responsibility to use all our skills and efforts to open these gateways ever wider for the benefit of our societies. We owe this to our users. Libraries are delivering better lives at the level of individuals and globally as well. And we are about transforming the world because the main goal of the United Nations nowadays till the 2030 is this, the transformation of the world. And we can really play an incredible good role in this. It seems obvious, but it's not, you know. It's a great effort we have to do to deliver this open access and especially uh, trying to uh, keep on board our decision makers that the libraries can really deliver this role. So we don't, don't need to follow the change. We can trade it. We really can do something special to make the, this idea clear for everybody. Um, I, you know, I'm from Spain. It is a, a, a very old country with a lot of poetry, literature. The Quixote was from there. And there is a very a special poet that is Antonio Machado that I really love. And uh, he said once and wrote, Caminante no hay camino, se hace camino al andar. That means that traveler, there is not path. The path is made by walking. You have really to walk and to do your own path, to have your way. So, Caminante no hay camino, se hace camino al andar, is the way we are working. Uh, we are walking as librarians because, as you know, we have many uh, strengths. We are all standing in at organizing, preserving, and dissemination information. We are very good in this. It's a classic of our role as librarians. But we see the importance of collaboration. We are dedicated to our work uh, and to our users. We are oriented to our users, our community of users. And we are embracing digital innovation, as Rachel said. But we must go forward. We need to come together to tackle the challenges we face nowadays. If we are to succeed sustainable in our mission, we are going to be really sustainable. If not, we are going to be the past of the access to information. And we really need to be the present and the future of access to information. As you uh, already know, IFLA is not in its own transformation. In 2016, Mr. Gerald Lehner started working as IFLA Secretary General, the CEO of our organization, and he brought with him a vision who, um, of how uh, the United Library field could together face these challenges of globalization. 
And as the global voice of the libraries, realizing this vision is something that IFLA cannot do alone. IFLA, in the headquarters in The Hague, in the National Library of The Hague, cannot do alone this important role. IFLA needs its members to move to, uh, forward. So we started a global conversation and having thousands of responses of all, all over the world, working together to build informed and particip participatory societies. Our global vision looks to empower, to engage everyone in the library field. It's not easy, but it's really an incredible new approach. This approach is uh, very ambitious, very ambitious. Never before have so many voices from across the library field been heard. I'm glad to say that the voices from New Zealand, uh, libraries, librarians, were absolutely there. So thank you for your inputs. Uh, all of these inputs summarized are in a report that it was launched in my first president meeting last year in Barcelona, last March, set out the opportunities that the global library field must realize in a changing world. And is a direction for the future. If the global vision is about finding responses to these global challenges, about identifying opportunities, that is the best, not just see what we have to face, also to have a lot of opportunities to work uh, on and about creating uh, the future we want. So we are identifying what we need to work together to get better, better uh, world and better IFLA as a, an organization. So we are about much more than running libraries and information centers day to day, much more than in, uh, agreeing and reaching consensus on a standards and guidelines for library work that we already are doing. We are about delivering better lives at the level of individuals and globally, as I said, with this uh, work regarding the agenda, the 2030 agenda. Our, our main task is to be the gears of the motors for a real and visible change that delivers development in our society. And we need to be able to tell the people that matter about this, the decision makers, the voters, the journalists, and our friends and family say that we can coordinate this advocacy, advocacy at all levels in order to an, a secure, sustainable public access to information through libraries now and in the future. This is very important. As you said, we are facing some problems with globalization and we really need to work, uh, to work now to have a better future in access to information in a very balanced world of, library, of access. So I'm asking you that every librarian become an advocate at all levels. You don't need to have in your door that you are a CEO. You don't need to be the director or the general director of your library. You have really to think that you, what you can do to deliver better services to, in this way to access to information. My program as IFLA president 2017-2019 because I will finish next August in Athens, is in harmony, absolutely harmony, with IFLA's new approach uh, of this participatory and inclusive uh, organization that I'm telling you that we are focusing with this new way to work that our CEO is giving us. And my work focuses on changing our mindset, building social engagement, and creating a network of leaders advocating on key issues such as an information literacy, digital transformation, innovation, digital preservation, and copyright reform. We need all of this to really change, to make it easier for everyone. And, but my, my program in itself cannot be complete and fulfilled with uh, greater synergies among all kind of libraries. So, is a, a need to, to work together with all kind of libraries to ensure our work has an impact that it deserves. And our voice, 
our global voice is heard. Because through the IFLA Global Vision, you will know more afterwards because our Secretary General will talk about this, um, we, we will see that we really can create our future. And all inputs are very welcome to be connected in also our new strategy. IFLA is working in a new strategy, in a new strategic plan, and um, we are really building together what is going to happen in the next years of IFLA. But uh, we have more good news, you know. Um, as in its own transformation, IFLA um, saw as well that we have not enough facts to advocate well. So we started a very important project. It's more than a project, it's really a tool that is the library map of the world. Um, this brings together nowadays data about libraries. Um, it's more than, um, nowadays it's more than 120 countries are in this map. And we know how many libraries you have in New Zealand about uh, public libraries, national library, and community libraries, but we need more because we need to know how many academic libraries you have. So you have to work with uh, to have these indicators, to have this clear map of what is happening in your country, to be stronger in this map of the world, and to help to see the whole picture of what libraries can do for our humanity. And we need this kind of synergies. We need facts, we need these tools that we are running now from uh, the IFLA staff, uh, led by our Secretary General, with these special tools that it seems, it seems very easy, but it's complicated because we're asking to our na national associations to help us in the indicators of this map. Because, uh, you know, we have to do this for our users. Our users don't understand of barriers they don't understand between institutions. They don't see the borders because in the digital age, there are no borders. The users are users we share. Uh, they can go to uh, internet, of course, and f see the information. So they don't understand about institutions. They just wanted to really to get into the information they need. So we also cannot achieve our goals if we focus only in the regional or global. We need a strong libraries and a strong library associations like you, Liasa. Um, uh, to, to, um, you have really to, to share this vision we have globally, to really have a strong library community here in New Zealand, to share as well this vision, and of course, work together to contribute to success. Um, this is something that it seems um, you know, weak, but uh, it's very important that we show to everybody that the library community is a very strong and united library community because our voice will be really better. Of course, our local situations may be different, so too many be the specific actions needed to respond, but um, we share our, as I said, overall goals and something that is as well very important our power and our passion. We are passionate librarians. We are working very hard to change uh, the future because as you know, libraries are the motor for change. And we really, to, we have to be the gears to make possible this change. And I'm sure that I can count of all of you to build together a, a united library field and I can wait meeting you next year in Auckland in the IFLA Annual Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Aura. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you here at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's, uh, didn't expect it that so many of you would come at this time. And uh, uh, our colleagues from the ASA created a, a really great program for our president and me, starting all this at 6 o'clock or 6.30, so I got <laughs> the impression you are all early birds, but actually I learned that Kiwis are night birds. So, <laughs> so when do you sleep? Uh, that's my first question to you, but I have several questions to you. Uh, who has ever been at the EFLOW conference before? Oh, that's some of you. Oh, but there's a potential here in the room. <laughs> And who is working at EFLA at the standing committee? Are you involved? Some okay, great to see. Yeah. Good. Okay. Should be more <laughs> after um, 2020. And open, trusted, united. That's a great slogan you have. And I would say it could describe EFLA. And I'm very happy that you that the National Committee has chosen such a great, great slogan because I guess this is really a symbol for the new EFLA. And you see here also a map of the world. What do you see? Is it like you see most of the time a world? It's quite different. Usually you see a world drawn with borders. Our idea is a trusted, open EFLA which connects the world, which should connect you, inspire you, which uh, should go down borders and connect the librarians all over the world. And we are going for it because I think, especially in times of globalization, with all the challenges growing more and more globally and affecting all of us, a global library organization like EFLA is needed more than ever. This was my motivation when I went to go for uh, EFLA Secretary General three years ago and I uh, had a huge respect of what EFLA has done in the past, but as all successful organizations, it's important that a successful organization changes. Otherwise, there is no success in the future if you don't change. And therefore, we are going to change EFLA totally. And we are doing with you, with the librarians of the world. And we want to hear the voices of New Zealand strong in it. And we are really thankful that we are going to have the conference in Auckland next year, which is a chance for you really to participate, to become a strong member of the EFLA community, to see the excitement. It's always being the first time at EFLA Congress is a very, very special moment. I have seen all these joyful faces last year in Kuala Lumpur from Malaysian people participating the first time, having the experience getting together with colleagues from 120, 130 countries, meeting them, meeting experts from all over the world, just sitting together and talking. It's not just a conference where, where experts are there. Of course, we, have, we will have here uh, 250 sessions, 250 sessions with more than 500 speakers coming from all over the world, talking about all what matters in the library field. That will be great. But the best experience from my point of view is to get connected with colleagues from all over the world, to build friendship, to build a network for the future where you can build up, you can exchange ideas, and maybe you will get the virus and will go to the next EFLA conference and to join us more. That's the intention uh, which we have together with the National Committee and to go for it. And the conference will be only successful with you. If you contribute, if you start to convince your colleagues to go there, to have a strong contribution from you there, to show the value of the library field of your country, to be proud of it and to show it uh, to the world. Because for many of us, from all our colleagues, it will be 
the first time, maybe it will be only once in the lifetime that they will come uh, to New Zealand, to Auckland, to meet your country, to see your country. And I guess you can be proud of your country. Show all your pride to the colleagues next year. Show what you have to offer. It's a lot what you can offer to the colleagues. I will, for all who don't know so much about IFLA, just some facts about IFLA. Yes, we are saying, as our president before, we are the global voice of the LIDO field. What does it mean? We are representing the libraries and librarians of the world uh, to all major institutions like the UN, like WIPO, like UNESCO. This means we are representing their, uh, uh, the interests of the libraries. And when you have spoken before about the SDGs, about the Sustainable Development Goals, then it's IFLA who brought the libraries in in the discussion at uh, the discussion about the Sustainable Development Goals. Without IFLA, we wouldn't have access to information, for example, as one of the goals of the Sustainable Development Goals. We lobbied there for four years, four years just to have such sentences on it which are mattering for libraries and without IFLA, you wouldn't be there. We wouldn't be there. Uh, yeah, we, uh, as I said before, we are representing the interests of libraries and information services and their users. And this is needed in a world which is going more and more to be a global world. As you see, we have SDGs for all 193 countries of the world. And for New Zealand, important. And just when we influence it on an international level, it will have, be, have, a, will have an effect for New Zealand. Well, what is all for you important? For example, copyright. Without copyright, you can't make your, role, your work. All of what we are doing is depending on copyright. And copyright is depending on international treaties, on WIPO, World International Property Organization. And from there it goes down nationally. <laughs> Only when decisions are made at WIPO to change the copyright, it can come down to New Zealand and affect the work in every library in New Zealand. And that's uh, one of the important issues which uh, IFLA has. We are an ind independent, non-governmental, non-profit organization with 1,300 in over 145 countries. This means a real global organization, 145 countries sounds a lot. There are not so many non-governmental organizations in the world who have members from 145 countries. When you compare it with archives, for example, or museums, they have all less uh, membership countries inside. But it could be more because you know that the United Nations assembles 193 countries. And of course, we want to have these 193 countries. And our next goal is going this year to 160 countries. And in four years, we want to reach these 193 countries. It's not only a question of finances. Of course, we are dependent on, on membership fees. But it's also a question of legitimacy. When we are saying we are the global voice, we don't want to have 45 countries outside. We want to have them on board. And we see especially the need in the Oceanian regions with some small countries also to get them on board and <laughs> asking Leah really to help us here uh, to bring more countries from your region to the IFLA family. We have our headquarters in the Royal Library in uh, Den Haag in the Netherlands. Uh, and we have some regional offices also in Buenos Aires, Pretoria, Singapore. And we are working with seven official languages. This means all major uh, IFLA documents are translated in uh, seven languages. This is also unique for organizations, I would say, because uh, it's a lot of work to do this, to run a website with seven languages, to translate all, and we are depending there on language centers. They are working with us. This means all six uh, UN languages plus German, uh, they 
official EPLA languages and you will see it when we are coming to, uh, to Auckland with our Congress, all major sessions are simultaneously translated to these seven languages. This is also an expansive thing what we're doing, but we don't want to leave librarians behind just with language issues. This is what we want to do. Yeah, and what I'm really proud, IFLA is the biggest brain thrust in the library world. We have 60 standing committees working on all what matters for libraries from preservation, uh, digitization, literacy, public libraries, national libraries, all types of libraries they are coming and we are developing their standards, standards, guidelines for the work of libraries and we are doing this with the input of 1,200 top experts in this field. They are giving the ideas. They are giving really the ideas wh what is important for libraries developing standards. We, wouldn't, we couldn't work without the standard. We couldn't communicate with each other without the standard. And it's an enormous chance here for you also to come on board. You can uh, apply to become one of the members, to work there, to get inspired, to bring in your ideas, to develop yourself also, because communication and work with international colleagues is an enormous chance for development. And otherwise you would give a lot for IFLA. We have this year's elections, it's already too late to apply, but we are going again in two years for a new elections where you can apply to become one of these 1,200 experts working together with IFLA. Yeah, and as said before, similar to your, uh, to your slogan, we are an open, inclusive, participatory organization. This is a bit different as IFLA worked before. We try to get an other organization style which brings you more in, which brings your ideas and more in because I think the power of the library field is, is you. It's uh, your ideas. You are our power. It's not Evelyn in Den Haag with a small headquarter. We are as powerful as we are when you are supporting us. Because a global answer to the challenges facing the library field from an ever increasing globalization must be a global answer. It cannot be an answer just from Den Haag. It must hear the voices from all parts of the world. And this is the reason why we started our vision process uh, two years ago. Who does know about this process from you? Not so many, yeah, okay. Then I will give you just some ideas about to show it. What we started is we, we asked uh, six questions, uh, very basic questions to librarians from all over the world. And here you see the questions and we got a lot of input, an input which is outstanding. We saw an incredible engagement that exceeded all our expectations which we had. And we had high expectations already at the beginning. Uh, what we did is we started with um, two years ago in Athens with a kickoff meeting where we assembled the officers of all our uh, standing committees. Uh, every, all these uh, standing committees have two officers. This means we had there are more as 120 officers, uh, to, uh, top experts, and they started to discuss about these questions. And then they went out and organized workshops with their standing committees this means we, create, we started to create a snowball effect with this, more and more people on board. And as next we went out to organize regional meetings and we had regional meetings all over the world in six regions and assembled their representatives from more than 140 countries where we discussed uh, two days uh, also in the Asian Oceanian region. We had our first workshop uh, in Singapore, where we uh, started the discussion also with participation from, uh, from New Zealand. And we had last year then a second workshop 
in Vietnam in, uh, and there also this participation of New Zealand. This means we tried to hear what, especially in this regional workshop, what are the library association saying? How do, uh, what do they think about? All together we organized in this form 185 workshops where more than 9,000 librarians participated. This means uh, an enormous participation and then we went out and organized um, um, internet platform where we got where we got response on almost 22,000 librarians from all over the world with a lot of experience inside what is it and I'm really proud to say this is really a global task this is really a global action you see the participation here from 190 countries of the world this is enormous there is no other organization in the world which did such a thing to ask all participants from the world what is the view what do you think about the future what can we do together this never happened before in the library field and it never happened in the cultural science or education field before there is no other organization who did this yeah and uh, we made then a global vision a report a summary just four pages uh, you can read it you can download it and if you want to read more you can get also the full report from our website with more than 700 pages where you can read in detail all the, all the answers what because because we got it this way more than 600,000 answers 600,000 answers which is enormous and you can imagine what the, what it means for uh, my colleagues to analyze it to bring it together uh, in this report and uh, we launched it then at the president's meeting as our president said in, in Barcelona and brought it there and the key finding which is really encouraging is that you see all over the world librarians are really united in their goals and values which is fine but what we see on the other hand is that they are uh, in, the, uh, in the regions and uh, especially national uh, specialities which we shall take in account and this is important for the next time for IFLA to be on the one hand a global voice but to acknowledge what is important in the region and that IFLA works more regionally as before that is the intention I just want to give you a very short overview what are uh, the 10 opportunities uh, which uh, we uh, our colleagues from 190 countries uh, find out and uh, it's really it's organized always in 10 opportunities where we should go for and you see here a short rundown you see technology works worldwide but uh, it has some specialities we don't see it now oh yeah <laughs> 10 opportunities to unite the library field opportunity one we must be champions of intellectual freedom that is one of the challenges where we go. Of course, we must update our traditional roles in the digital age. We have to understand community needs and design services for impact. We must keep up with ongoing technological changes. And we need more and better advocates at all levels. Every librarian and advocate, that is our goal. Opportunity six, we need to ensure stakeholders to understand better our values. And we do, we have to develop a spirit of collaboration. We need to challenge current structures and behaviors. And as we are here in the National Library, it's important cultural heritage to go for. And I'm happy to see here colleagues to give young professionals new opportunities to lead because this is our idea for the future and it must be for the next generation and what we are doing we are creating for this an idea store to get ideas from all over the world for it and with this idea store we want to create our next steps
because I guess you have seen many papers already in your life, many strategy papers, and many of them were very well written. The problem is they ended not in the mind of the people, they ended in the drawer. Very well written. And a vision without execution is a hallucination. All these efforts, what we have done in the last two years, would be nonsense if we wouldn't start to get action. And this is what I would like to ask you to go with us. What we started to create is the biggest idea stores for actions, which should be a source of inspiration for librarians and for EFLA in planning the future. We have built up this global vision summary report. And what we are going now is to co-create an idea store from librarians all over the world. We did already. And uh, we have here an incredible input from librarians from all over the world for these 10 opportunities. How many ideas do you think are already in these idea stores? For all this, we have 10 opportunities and we ask librarians to contribute <coughs> in the last year to inspire colleagues from outside of the, from other continents, from other library types to fulfill these actions. How many ideas do you think are they already in? A more than 8,500 ideas. 8,500 ideas to fulfill these actions. And what we want to reach with it. On the one hand, these 8,500 ideas which we analyzed will enable the EFLA governing board to create a new strategy. A strategy with the input from colleagues from all over the world, a strategy for the next five years, 19 to 14. And, then, and we will open this idea store at the Congress in Athens in August for all colleagues from all over the world. And you can visit it and you see one of the opportunities, for example, digitization or advocating, uh, literacy support, and you can search for it and, and, and will find 8,500 ideas which you can use in the work for your library to do new services, to create it, to get in connection with others. And what the wonderful thing will be for all these ideas will be support from EFLA because it will be connected with the EFLA strategy. It will strengthen the actions. And on the other hand, with, you, with your input, when you are working with these ideas, you are strengthening the strategy of EFLA. This means all goes together in this way and we will create in this way powerful actions of a global united library field. This means this is not an order what you should do, it's an offer what you can do. We give you an offer to contribute, to be on board, to be with us, to be with colleagues from, from other 190 countries in the world. What we will try is with this strategy which we are creating currently and we, which we will launch also in August in Athens to go out to regional meetings. We will organize also a regional meeting in Asia Oceania where we will invite representatives from all countries here to create with, to give them offers to contribute with their national strategies. This means with uh, Liasa to contribute uh, to the EFLA strategy. What can we do together? What is your speciality here in this region? What can we do? And in this way, uh, we will ask you, go apart with us. It's not necessary that, you, that we are doing all the same, but if you, we do several parts together, we are stronger. This is our offer to work together for the future. Yeah, 8,500 ideas already in, and we will open it, as I said, in uh, Athens and we will go on. We have already gone a long way where we are, but we are still on the start. You will see we will go out in August 2019 with a new strategy, with a total different way of creating a strategy. It's a bottom-up strategy with the input from librarians from all over the world. And with this strategy, we will, we will change our organization because 
we will go out in essence with the strategy and then we start to create, to change EFLA, the governance of EFLA, to create a new EFLA also with the input. And our idea is that in this process, that in one year we will go then to the General Assembly, which will be in Auckland 2020, and our members will vote on a new governance structure of EFLA, which will enable us to go for a new election to have a different structure which will be more orientated on, the, on regional work, on the work also here in Asia Oceania, and we hope to get more members from here, and we hope to get you on board to the new EFLA, because we need you if we want to fulfill our vision together, to create a strong united library field powering literate informed societies, because we're doing it not for you, we're doing it from the, for the people of your country. Many thanks. Join us. I'd like to ask you to stand. We'll sing the uh, Lianza Waiata to thank our guests. Sure, colleagues, that's the, the formalities of this morning's session over, but there is an opportunity, I think, we've got a few minutes, where if there are any questions for our very important guests, um, we've got some microphones, I believe, somewhere in the room. Uh, Deb, do you want to run around with a microphone if anybody's got a question? This is a unique opportunity for you to have a face-to-face -face with our global leadership for IFLA. Any questions? Don't be shy. Yeah, Gerald and Gloria, would you like to take a seat here and, um, and see who's asking you the question? There must be a question in the room after that. Surely. There we go. I'm interested to hear how you both first became involved in IFLA. So I was a volunteer in Barcelona in 1993, and I knew from IFLA in my school, IFLA Library in Chief and Information Science School, of course, that I, I was m my first contact was in Barcelona, uh, as I told you, as a volunteer, and I fell in love with IFLA. So started to work afterwards in the public library section because of I'm a public librarian first. And I was really enjoying the work there in the section during eight years. Then I ran for GD, Governing Board member elections, and afterwards as IFLA president-elect and IFLA president. So long, long career in <laughs> IFLA. Uh, I got involved 22 years ago. Uh, by a coincidence at the same time as Bill, we <laughs> figured out we have been at the same pre-conference and were speakers at the same conference 22 years ago in Copenhagen. And, uh, but it was just a pre-conference uh, of IFLA as we will have several here also in 2020 in several uh, libraries here around. 
Yeah, and then the next year I was at the conference in Amsterdam, uh, 1998, and since this time I was at all IFRA conference. I got the virus, and I <laughs> uh, but it took me a long time to get more involved. I just valued to to meet colleagues there, to speak with them about, in I was at that time, I was Secretary General of the Austrian Library Association. The Austrian Library Association is a mixture between a library association and the office uh, of the central state doing uh, services. This means we had around 20, had around 20 colleagues organizing uh, services for Austrian libraries at this moment. And I was interested always to transfer good ideas um, to Austria in this form, getting inspired from EFLA, and it helped me a lot. Yeah, and then I, um, uh, I was also president of the uh, European Library Associations, get uh, got more involved in it more and more and more and more yeah, and then my children uh, finished school and I thought this is the moment I can leave home and <laughs> apply for IFLA Secretary General this was three years ago and now I'm going home every weekend to Vienna from Den Hague this means I'm a traveler <laughs> any more questions I'm Gloria Engerhardt. You've, you've experienced already little aspects of Māori culture and you see how you've probably seen since our bid how important um, the, um, the Māori culture is to the way that we do things here in New Zealand. How does IFLA work with indigenous communities to try and encourage all ranges of indigenous communities to participate in the important work of IFLA? Uh, as I said before, we have uh, 60 standing committees uh, working on all uh, important issues for the library field, and it shows the importance for us that we have one section which is uh, working especially for for this. And I guess it's, it's also great uh, to see because it brings together the views, indigenous uh, societies from all over the world. This is the fascinating thing, that you are not uh, only f uh, concentrated on your own that you see you are not alone, that you see there are several challenges which are similar all over the world, and you can transfer knowledge from others how to tackle these challenges. And I would say your community has a lot to offer to the international community because what ex excites me really in your country is how you are doing so well. This is exceptional, and it would be great to get your voice more heard at EFLA on this uh, issue. Question from Andy. There's a growing number of people going to Athens from the library world in New Zealand, which is marvelous. Um, but from my experience, half of them are funding themselves. Um, how, what advice would you give to librarians in New Zealand to get funding from their library bosses and perhaps their non-library bosses? not an easy question, I have to admit. Uh, finance is always a, <laughs> a difficult question, and there is not an easy answer. Uh, talking, talking, talking. Talking about how important it is for your development, it's, uh, that, that you get other ideas, that your libraries get new ideas to be connected with colleagues, that it's not a journey just to a nice country, it's a journey to, to new ideas which can give bring back value to your library. That's the only thing what you can do. I know that many of your bosses will say, ah, you just want a nice journey to go to Europe and to do it, and how do you deserve it, and uh, it is uh, so expensive. You have to convince them, every librarian and advocate, as we say. And uh, that has to start at the next moment. I can share with you my experience. I'm from Spain. We have difficulties to go to the IFLA conference because, as you know, there's uh, not just the, the travel expenses, it's also the accommodation during one week to come from Basel. And we prefer from the uh, Spanish Federation of Library Associations, that is our association, to uh, have a, a, a community travel. So we manage in this way 
and it was not from Parliament, so that was why she called Kita, because we were saying that why she's doing uh, uh, authorization for 1,000 candies for four people during one week or so. I, I have to leave to, uh, to admit that uh, if you organize yourself, it's cheaper. But you have to do it. You have to do this effort uh, in, uh, in your community, not just, um, of course, asking for the permission for your bosses in, in, uh, in your organizations, but also being uh, working together from the association to have several um, facilities and uh, to book uh, <coughs> together and it's, it's cheaper. And what EVLO is currently doing, we're trying uh, to get more and more grants for participations. This means uh, we will, uh, I think in one week, we will go out with our next newspaper. We have a newsletter for the, c for the Congress, uh, a monthly newsletter which goes out and mid of the month, this means mid of February, and there we will announce grants where you can apply, for example, also. Mo uh, what is our intention to get more and more grants? More and more grants, especially for for new pro uh, for new professionals, because they have the uh, the biggest uh, problems to uh, get fundings for for them. And this is also a roadmap for us for Ifla to bring more new professionals inside and to offer grants for it. But uh, it's not easy to get the money for it, yeah. I think we'll have to wrap up at that, but that question makes actually underscores just what a great opportunity Auckland 2020 will be for New Zealand librarians, because you don't need permission to travel outside of New Zealand to attend. We will be encouraging people to volunteer to support that conference, and that's another really good cost-effective way of people being involved in the conference at a very uh, reasonable cost. The National Library's Charitable Foundation, Tapuna Foundation, has already pledged a quarter of a million dollars to support a volunteer program for IFA 2020. So really this is going to be a chance of a lifetime for New Zealand librarians to be directly involved in the work of IFLA. Contribute your voice to the global vision that our colleagues um, have been developing uh, to support the work that we do locally in New Zealand. So great opportunity coming for us next year. Um, I'll ask you to show your appreciation for our two speakers, but before I do that, a particular appreciation because this is the first time in her life that Gloria has ever given a public talk before eight o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> please thank our speakers. Questions if we still have any. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>